This is the hardest escape room in Minecraft. Is what I thought until I saw this. With nine different rooms full of challenging puzzles, traps, and hidden features, this is the hardest escape room ever made in Minecraft history. And I'm going to attempt to beat it. And afterwards, just like last time, I'll send it over to five of my friends and have them suffer just as much as I did. But first, I have to escape. The first thing that caught my eye when I spawned into room 1 was the lectern in the center and the two openings on the side. The walls to the room were very high with an exit about 10 blocks off the ground. I read the book in the lectern, which on the surface just laid out the rules to the room but contained two important details if you look closely. The first was the mention of keep inventory. The fact that this was explicitly mentioned probably means that at some point I had to kill myself to progress in the escape. The second interesting part was the mention of giving myself food. The fact that the difficulty was automatically set to easy means that at some point mobs are most likely involved, but that didn't matter just yet so I gave myself some steak and began searching. In this type of escape room every single thing matters so I started off by grabbing the lectern and underneath it was a piece of magma cream in an item frame. But the problems didn't start for real until I opened the chest. In the chest was probably the most random assortment of items I had ever seen. A carrot, a piece of quartz, two blocks of cobblestone, two turtle eggs, another magma cream, another quartz ore, and a magenta banner. I decided to pick up the chest as well and the crafting table and underneath I found a piece of named diorite. Now I had a ton of stuff so I turned on chunk borders to count the number of blocks I would need to make it to the exit. It was 10 and I had 7. I was currently 3 blocks short so I turned my attention to the only other thing in the room the two pathways. These openings both led into the same room, a maze. I tried to look over the walls with F5 but was met with barriers blocking my view. After looking around the maze for 30 seconds I came across a furnace. Underneath the furnace I noticed an item frame and inside was a gold nugget. The furnace itself was empty and now I had to figure out what to smelt. I turned on the smelting guide and was met with two options, quartz and stone. I wasn't sure about smelting the cobblestone because what was I going to do with two stone? But of course, the other question was, why smelt the quartz? I would just be wasting a block. But after looking around a bit more, I decided there was no point in giving me quartz or if I wasn't supposed to smelt it. For fuel, I decided to go with a banner because it was the most useless item I had on me. Now with the quartz, I unlocked a new recipe. Diorite. But okay, what was the point of that? I would just be turning two blocks into two blocks and using up the quartz. But then it hit me. What can you do with three diorite? Of course. Slabs. So I crafted the two cobblestone into diorite and then my heart sank. The slab recipe didn't show up. And then it clicked. It was because the diorite was renamed. If an item is renamed, it means that its recipe won't show up in the crafting guide and I would have no idea if there was a recipe and something I could craft. That means whenever I got a named item, I would always have to be careful when using it. Nonetheless, I could still craft the slabs by hand and use them as well as the little handy lectern trick to make my way out of the room. My friend, the creator of this room, told me that this time there was no hidden string to look out for, so I gave the room one more look over and at the last minute decided to go check behind the furnace just in case. There was nothing and I was stuck. Glad I made a backup. The next room was much smaller. The exit was on the ground floor, but the room itself was filled with glass, and on each side there was a container behind iron bars that I had to break to reach. This was a pain room. Of course it was. So while I'm wasting my life mining iron bars, I would like to quickly ask that if you are enjoying the video, then please consider subscribing. I'm currently in a race against Minecraft itself, and I can't pass them without your help. Right now, Minecraft is on version 1.18, and I'm only on version Weefy's 1.12, so I would greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe and help me pass Minecraft. For real though, it does help me out a ton, and I promise you won't regret it. And of course, check out Seawalk Gaming as well, because his prison videos are the main inspiration behind this series. But hey, it looks like I finally finished finished breaking the glass. Inside chest number one was a piece of horse armor. The other two containers were hoppers which meant I couldn't collect them but inside they held a magma cream and a renamed nether brick ingot. Inside the furnace there was a gold nugget and a piece of charcoal. At first I didn't know what to smelt but with the help of the recipe book I melted the golden horse armor for yet another golden nugget. This room was a lot bigger than the first two and immediately a few things caught my eye. There was a red spiral pattern on the floor with a crafting table just in front of it. On the right there was a huge bedrock cube and on the left a nether portal. The bedrock cube on the right was a classic item hider and inside I found a slime block in an item frame. And of course I could only reach it by placing a chest. 
why wouldn't I? I couldn't find anything else in the item hider, so I turned my attention to the centerpiece. Last time, there was nothing underneath the glazed floor, but since I couldn't make anything other than slime balls and I'm not taking any chances, I spent a sad amount of time breaking every single block in the floor. And this time, it was worth it, because inside I found bone meal? And yet another golden nugget. Still though, I could only craft white dye and slime balls, and neither of those seemed to be of any use. I needed 9 blocks to get out, and I only had 3. Granted, I also had these two turtle eggs, but once I placed them, I couldn't get them back, so I was hesitant to use them. That left me with one more option, the nether portal. So I popped into the nether, and inside I found two hoppers with two glowstone and two nether wart. This still didn't unlock any crafting recipes though, and left me just as confused, if not more confused than before. Maybe there was a hidden recipe thanks to the named items, but if there was, I didn't know about it. I was stuck. I had no idea what to do. I rechecked the item hider, but nothing was there. I even checked underneath the crafting table that I placed. That's how desperate I was. But then I had a pretty interesting idea. What if whenever I left to go to the nether, something changed about the room I was currently in? So I tried throwing in an item to load the nether chunks, and nope, nothing happened. I did the same thing in the nether, but to no avail. I also tried to stretch my FOV to Quake Pro to see outside the room, but that didn't reveal anything either. I thought that I might have to call it quits on room 3. No, that's not gonna happen. So I tried to think about it logically. Okay, right, here's what I'm thinking. Why, why would there be a nether portal here just to get items, right? It's either, it's, it's something to do with the nether, or it's something to do with the portal. Maybe it's the biome. The biome did not help me at all. It was a basalt delta and that meant nothing to me. The overworld biome was of course, a void. By my logic, that meant the answer had something to do with the portal itself. I toyed with the idea of spending 33 minutes to break the 8 obsidian corner. Yeah, no thanks, I'm not doing that. But just then, I had another idea. One block in the nether is 8 blocks in the overworld, so what if I stand on the far right or far left of the portal? Maybe it will take me to a different portal somewhere in the overworld. So I tried it, but nothing happened. So it's not that. But what if, what about really far in the front? Maybe that's how you do it? I don't know. Like this? Cause that should take us to like a further place coordinate wise. <gasps> no, that actually worked. And just like that, I did it. A portal 10 blocks away in the overworld was linked to the same portal in the nether. Inside the chest was 10 blaze rods and I immediately knew what to do with that. I turned them all into blaze powder and used the slime from my slime block to make 12 magma cream and 3 magma blocks. Now I only had 6 blocks to get up 9 but that was definitely enough, thanks to fire jumping. Using the boost from the magma blocks I was able to skip 1 block each time and after spending a sad amount of time that really pains me to admit I finally fire jumped my way up and into the next room. Continuing the pattern, this room was even more massive than the last. When I entered, I was greeted by a huge maze on the ground. In the corner, I saw a little area marked off with end portal frames, and on the far wall there was a large sign reading start with an arrow pointed onto an end portal frame. In the middle of the maze there was a hopper on a pedestal, and in the corner there was a dropper facing downwards with a piston right next to it. I tried to jump onto the walls of the maze to avoid falling in, but realized quickly that the whole thing was actually covered in barriers and impossible to enter. Inside the hopper was an arrow and a golden nugget with silk touch. I then began to look around the maze floor and noticed nothing in particular until I reached the corner with the dropper. Inside the maze there was a pressure plate and now things were beginning to make sense. I assumed that once I started the game by standing on the end portal frame with the arrow I would be teleported into the maze and would have to step on this gold pressure plate to get an item from the dispenser. Sounds straightforward enough, so I started the game. And nothing. I didn't get teleported, so I thought maybe the portal section had opened since it was the only other marked thing in the room. But as I arrived, I noticed something. A zombified piglin. I checked and I actually couldn't enter the maze. This meant I would need to somehow make this zombified piglin complete the maze in 5 minutes. If this item despawned before the piglin stepped on the pressure plate, I would lose. So I quickly tried to figure out how to lure the piglin. I tried throwing gold on the ground, but that didn't work at all. I checked my inventory and nothing seemed to be of any use until I realized. Turtle eggs. Previously I couldn't use the turtle eggs because they would break when I tried to remove them, but this time I had a silk touch nugget from the hopper, so I placed the turtle egg on the bedrock, but nothing happened. It was over. The zombified piglin straight up walked in the opposite direction. I was going to lose, the item was going to despawn. But then by some miracle, its AI realized there was a turtle egg in its range and it immediately turned to track the egg. 
This was perfect. Using the turtle eggs, I began leading the zombified piglin down the maze, but I couldn't celebrate just yet. I had four minutes to solve this maze before I lost forever. What made things worse is that I didn't know the right way to do the maze and I could be going the completely wrong direction. Luckily, I scouted ahead and this seemed to be the correct route, so I began strategically leading the pigman through the twists and turns of the maze. And with barely 30 seconds left, I completed the maze. A piece of concrete was dispensed from the dropper, and after gathering the turtle eggs, I pillared to the exit and escaped the room, managing to snag another turtle egg along the way. When I entered this room, the first thing I noticed was the massive wall of lava in the back. Behind me, there was another gold nugget, and in the corners of the room, there were two target blocks that I had to activate with my arrow. Problem is, I only have one arrow and no way to even shoot it, so I dropped down and collected the carpet right below me. In the corner of the room, there was a crafting table and a furnace, but I didn't really have any use for them just yet. To escape, I needed three blocks, but currently I had zero. I was definitely either missing some items or a crafting recipe, but where on earth would items be hidden in this room? Of course behind the lava. The lava itself was sectioned off with barriers, but in between the rows of barriers there were gaps that I could reach through. On the first row I found a hopper with two glowstone, and now I could make a glowstone block. That's one down, two to go. After a bit more searching I also found a stone cutter, but there was nothing I could carve. And then finally in the third row of the barriers I found my last hopper which had a bow in it. Now I could shoot one of the two target blocks, but that was a problem. I could only shoot one. Which one? If I shot one of them, there was no guarantee I could shoot the other, and there was no indication as to which one to shoot, so I was clueless. Yet again, I was missing something. So after wrecking my brain and coming up empty, I returned to the crafting table, and lo and behold, the answer was right there. A spectral arrow. But wait, what's the point of that? Well, using my glowstone, I could actually turn my one arrow into two spectral ones, meaning I could shoot both target blocks. On one hand, I would be losing a potential glowstone block, but this option just seemed more correct, as I would be taking an irreversible risk only shooting one of the droppers. So I crafted the arrows and took aim. One dropper gave me a golden nugget, and the other a piece of netherrack. At first, this just seems like another random block which would leave me stuck, but what you might not know is that you can smelt netherrack into nether brick. I wasn't sure if this was gonna do anything, but why else would there be a furnace and netherrack? It just seemed too convenient. And plus, if I couldn't smelt the netherrack, there was nothing else in this room for me to find. So I smelted the netherrack, and unlocked... nothing. No recipes. However, the nether brick from before was renamed. So somewhere with this random set of items exists a crafting recipe that can help me out. I just need to find it. And after a bunch of random guessing, and yes, I admit, googling, I found the crafting recipe for red nether brick. Again, on the surface, this just seems like a waste of resources. I was still stuck with one block. But there is one part of the room I haven't used yet, and that's the stone cutter I found earlier. Using the stone cutter, I turned the nether brick into slabs and use my turtle egg and carpet to climb out of the room and into the next one. This room was weird. On my right was a massive wall of end portal frames, unbreakable but see-through blocks. In the middle of the room there was a hopper that I tried to aim for but failed miserably. In the corner of the room there was a little nook of end portal frames with a bed hidden behind. There was also no visible exit to the room which left me with only one option. Set my spawn and try to die. If I could find a way to kill myself, I could respawn in the next room. Or at least that seemed like the only way to get out. In the opposite corner there was a small carpet which I tried to use to reach the hopper but to no avail. That just left the wall. After a quick inspection this wasn't just a random wall. None of the frames were full but behind that wall was a layer of water covering two layers of hoppers. By sneaking in between the cracks of the frames I checked every single hopper and found nothing except my eighth golden nugget. How was I going to die using this wall, a random hopper, and a carpet? Plus the items I had on me. And what on earth was the water for? What can I do here? What do I have? 
And then I noticed something. The color of the water was different. The water on the edges was dark and normal, but the water in the center was turquoise. What does this mean? Well, water color is dependent on the biome, and opening the F3 menu confirmed my suspicion. A small sector of the prison was manually changed into a warm ocean biome. So, I checked my inventory and began eliminating items that definitely didn't help. Item frames, carrots, books, none of that was useful. And I could only think of one thing that could be. Bone meal. I knew that bone mealing water would make seagrass, but what if that changed in a warm ocean? Well, it was the only shot I had. So I took aim in the warm ocean block, and nothing happened. So I tried every block, even the normal ocean, and nothing happened until the very middle warm ocean water source. I mean, something happened, but I don't know what happened. The bone meal just vanished. I had used it, but for what? With a quick Google search, I learned that I actually had just grown a coral fan, and I knew exactly what to do with that. Using my Silk Touch Golden Nugget, I broke the coral fan through the cracks and used it to raise the carpet level just like with the turtle egg in the previous room. And inside the hopper was... A dripstone. That's it. I had to kill myself with a dripstone. By the time I got off the carpet, I realized that the coral had died and I didn't get it back when I mined it. Hopefully that's intentional. I tried to find a place to drop the dripstone on myself, but nowhere in the room had a ledge. But then I remembered the other property of dripstone, amplified fall damage. And after bouncing on the dripstone for a painful amount of time, I died and respawned in the next room. This next room was completely blank except for a crafting table, and I only needed two blocks to get up. Shouldn't be that bad, right? In the corner of the room there was a golden pressure plate covered with a barrier. Like the maze level, I needed some way to activate it and hopefully give me a block. But there was nothing. Or was there? I looked around the room and tried to find anything that I could do to press the pressure plate. There was absolutely nothing. The room was blank. For the hundredth time, I was stuck. Again. And after a lot of thinking and head scratching, I tried something I hadn't tried before. I used F3. Now you may ask yourself, what's the point? Well, the whole plan relied on this little counter right here, the E counter. The E counter refers to entities, and I could use it to see if there were any mobs on the layer below me with the pressure plate. And lo and behold, there was one mob, or one entity. At first, I thought it was a piglin, so I tried leading it to the pressure plate using my nuggets, but that didn't seem to do anything. But then I had another good idea. I turned on subtitles. Now because these escape rooms take years to solve, I usually play them while blasting some sort of music to keep me from going insane. The downside to this though is that I miss any sounds made in the game. Hopefully turning on subtitles would tell me what type of mob was below me. And it did a horse. And with that, I knew just what to do. I took my eight golden nuggets and crafted them alongside the carrot into a golden carrot. With this, I could lure the horse onto the pressure plate. I walked to the middle of the room to get its attention and slowly moved it over, and I was spot on. Luckily, I was in F5, so I noticed a piece of bedrock placed onto my head as a result. Not today, escape room. And yes, I know what you're gonna say, I tried and it doesn't work multiple times. After unsuccessfully trying to snag the crafting table, I entered the next room. Just like the previous, this room was completely blank and looked impossible. The entire chamber consisted of a massive drop that I would definitely die if I fell down. I tried peering under the platform with Quake Pro, but that didn't reveal any hidden blocks. At the bottom of the room, I noticed two hoppers, but I didn't think they could offer anything in getting down. I had no placeable blocks apart from carpets and item frames, both of which were completely useless in this scenario. Again, then, I was stuck. I tried throwing my food into the hopper and see if it would trigger some sort of redstone, but after accidentally throwing my entire stack of food down, I realized two things. One, I was an idiot and there was no redstone, and two, I now needed to beat the room in five minutes before my food despawned forever. I desperately tried looking around for a way down, but I couldn't think of anything. This was it. So close to the end, yet so far. But then, at the very last moment, I had an idea. And yeah, maybe it's not the most ethical way to get down, but by leaving and rejoining the world, I was able to glide safely down and take no fall damage in the process. And okay, maybe there was actually an item frame with a fake bedrock leading into a slime block that I could bounce on, but hey, this works too, so I'm gonna count it. But now I was finally into the last room of the map. I checked the two hoppers in the corners, and immediately I was terrified. What lay before me was probably the randomest set of items I had ever seen in my life. You had small drip leaves, conduits, target blocks, and skews. 
skewts. And somehow these random items would help me reach the end of that. A massive lake of lava. What made things even more confusing were the weird hieroglyphics on the walls. On one side there was what appeared to be a target block, a conduit, and some other weird wavy pattern that I wasn't sure of. The other side made things even worse. If you convert those letters to Roman numerals, you get 1152. Is that version 1.15.2? Is that a number of something in the game? Is that a set of coordinates? I don't know. I tried to see if I was anywhere near the coordinates, and to my surprise, I was actually very close to the coordinates negative 1152. Maybe there was some hole in the lava or secret chest at that location. But how on earth would I get there? I checked underneath the lava to see if there were any secret chests, but I couldn't find anything. With this assortment of items, there was no way I was getting to negative 1152, much less the other side. All seemed hopeless, but not just yet because I had one more trick up my sleeve, in vulnerability. As you may remember, when I re-logged and joined back, I didn't take any fall damage on my way down the pitfall. Well, the same thing actually works in lava. By leaving and reconnecting right as I was about to burn, I was able to swim my way across the entire lava lake to the end of the room. I didn't even need negative 1152. I was at the end. Using the random blocks to pillar my way up, I just barely made it to the exit without dying. And just like that, I had done... Wait. Wait, what? I, I, I made it to the end. What do you mean it's not the right way? There's no other way out. That's the only way. Somehow there was another exit to this prison, and I have no idea where it is. My entire plan revolved around this opening, and now that I'm here, I just get taunted? All that hard work and swimming for nothing. So defeated, I jumped into the lava and respawned back near the horse. Now, it's... It's over. I spent probably upwards of 20 minutes just thinking, trying to figure out what I could have missed and what else is there to know. I still didn't really use the hieroglyphics, so maybe there's some obscure mechanic I was missing. And then finally, in a last ditch effort, I tried the trick that once worked in hopes of it saving me again. F3. The entity counter. And then... I saw it. In the very corner of the room, a singular entity was below the entire prison. This was a void world, so there's no reason for anything to be there if it wasn't part of the map. So I inched closer and waited. And there it was. LET'S GO! Yes! If you want to play this map for yourself, the world download will be in my Discord server in the description, so feel free to join and check it out. If this video gets two likes, I'll upload the YouTubers doing the room on my second channel, Tweefy, so be sure to check that out as well, if you're interested. But thank you so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, please consider subscribing, and as always, peace out, have a good one, I'll see you next time.